Hello! Well, so, what's today's video going to be? Today's video is going to be another UAD video, but it's going to involve me answering questions from the County Cruisers Part 8 summary. And while doing that, I want to... Well, I'm experimenting around with various capital ship designs, <laughs> largely because of the what is going to be the Equitable London Treaty. And due to discussions that have come out from people on that one, the Equitable London Treaty is going to start off with and is going to very much focus on what would happen if the Washington Treaty is as is, and if in 1930, someone sensible, who's not obsessed with 14-inch guns, basically turns around and goes, the world is different. We are not going to do this. We are not going to go down this world. And honestly, the basic starting point for making any changes is if we change the if we change who wins the election in the UK. So at the moment they w get a Labour government who look they are a very good government. They make decisions. They do for the reasons they do at that time. That particular Labour government, but. The thing is, they do have a different view on defence, and one of their views on defence does end up building the York and Exeter. So, my theory is, if we keep the Conservatives, they liked the heavy cruisers, they wanted more heavy cruisers, they didn't want, they liked not having limited cruisers, they didn't mind having limit overall, but they didn't like having limit on their numbers. And I thought they would fight further for, uh, harder for slightly more. And this is a sort of interesting scenario because really the Royal Navy knows it needs 70 cruisers. That's what I told you. So therefore you need, if you're going to do on a 10,000 ton limit, you need roughly 700,000 tons of cruiser. If that's what you're building. So that's sort of some of the ideas I'm working around and I'm sort of muttering around with as I write and rewrite my Equitable London Treaty, uh, starting with the Washington Treaty base, but I thought, while doing that, you might like to look at some of the capital ship ideas I've had come up with, and I've sort of been playing around with, with UAD modifications, and with the ideas for what might potentially be viable. Because I've taken it as... Basically, they get to 1930 and they go, right then, we're going to make a limit slightly better than 35,000 tons. And then as long as someone doesn't start sprinkling the magic 14-inch gun fairy dust, you either have the Royal Navy go with a 15-inch gun, an improved 15-inch gun, which would have been sensible logistically, or they go with an improved 16-inch gun. It's actually an interesting debate to get into, over 15-inch versus 16-inch, and it does depend on what your tonnage limitation is, because, theoretically, if you have a Nux extra tonnage and you go for a all four arranger again, you can end up with 12 guns. So, you're going to get to see a theoretical battle between such super ship 1215 versus a, a Bismarck. And let's be honest, the limit on the Bismarck, and <laughs> this is something I always find funny about this, but I always like trying to explain to you, is not the treaties, because the Germans weren't paying any attention to them at all. Their infrastructure and what they can actually build. The Bismarck and Tirpitz represent the absolute limit of what Germany could actually build. So no matter how you change the treaties, or how you change things around, the odds are they don't produce anything better. The really interesting thing is the treaties, in many ways, hamper the Royal Navy and the US Navy the most of all. Because, yes, the Japanese build the Yamato and Mashashi. They build these big super battleships. Probably. But, and this is the big, glorious, glutamus, maximus 
of the whole point. That crippled the rest of the Japanese construction going on. The only two nations who could have built far bigger, far more powerful ships than actually they put into service and have actually still maintained a suitably balanced fleet in proportion to them are Britain and the US. They are. They're the only ones with the maritime infrastructure and industry to be able to do so. They're the only ones with the arms and its industry to do so. They are the only ones with all the equipment they need to do so. They are the only option. That is the reality of what you're So, please, enjoy what's coming. In uh, five, four, three, two, one. <clears throat> so, it only seems fair I start off with, well, the thing that's going to make you most critique me, probably. Because, yes, this is my variation on a Bismarck Serpitz class. Which I've slightly modified because of the likelihood of the treaties. So what they would probably have by. But the fact is, twin turrets are probably the maximum the Germans can produce. But I have been nice. I have given them a load of six-inch guns. They have nine of those. And there you go, they have lots of 4-inch AA guns, so... Yeah, that's me being as nice as I can get, uh, as I get. I was tempted to put in 3-inch guns as replicants for the 88, but... For all. So I decided 100mm would do, and 150mm would be, you know, fine. Again, they did originally carry 6 twin turrets, and I've given them 6 treble. Because I feel they could have done us. So, there we go. Engine efficiency, 57.1%. Um, components, let's try to see if we can't fix that a bit. I have to admit, I have given it diesel power. Perhaps I should go for geared turbines. And... Forced. Yeah, that's probably going to be best. Honestly, I don't like the German funnels. I really, uh, th there's just something about them which doesn't sit right with me in the system at the moment. But they, they look, it looks okay and it looks roughly turpid. So, what's it going to be taking on? Well, this is where I get a bit cruel because this is what it's taking on. Yes, in a world where 16 inches is still the limit. And considering that I will be putting the aviation facilities back here and on a later design, which will be probably sensible in that period, this is 12, 15 inch guns. And yes, yeah, she's pretty. Oh, she's so pretty. Okay, yes, at 51,500 tons fully loaded, I'm not quite sure how I make her work out with the treaty limitation. But I think I could probably do something, especially as the, I expect that quite a lot of this would be water-based armour. Um, she's not quite as fast as her German counterpart. Her German counterpart is capable of doing a little bit far going a little bit faster, which is probably good for them because that's basically what they're going to be relying on to get out of trouble. But this is her not only fully loaded up. This is her fully kitted out with radars and things, which actually don't come into existence till the 1940s in the real world. Uh, well, at least the, the, the late 1930s, not 1932 when I'm doing this. So, yeah, I, I, I'm sorry, but i um, not sorry about her weighing quite as much as she does. But I think she does look very pretty. Definitely very pretty. So, let's launch and see what happens, shall we? Now, the scenario that I'll be playing on behind uh, behind you while I uh, while I talk about the wonderful thing that is the questions and the comments and answer them, which I always enjoy doing. The scenario that's playing out is a two v two. So technically, the British do have 
probably this will be one of many Task Force out hunting a twin German, i.e. Bismarck and Tirpitz have come out together, operation. Which would be pretty much a nightmare, let's be honest. They have 4-inch guns, and they have 2-inch guns, and they have torpedoes. And again, Anson and Malaya. That's not a good pair of names to have uh, sailing towards anyone. Anything named after all after Admiral Anson could be expected to do some very wackadoodle maneuvers. Oh yeah. Negative 25% accuracy in terms of four barrels. Smooth seaways. But she's got... Oh. She's got quite a lot of in-pro crew training. Bird guns grade. Yeah. She's got a lot of positives for actually engaging the enemy. So let's see what happens. But I'd reckon the enemy is there somewhere. But we will see. Anyway, to the questions. Which are always fun. To the questions. And rather appropriately, you can barely see the enemy. Which is historically quite accurate. But the enemy are over there. So yes, the Royal Navy Task Force, lovely load of 15 inches, it has found their German counterparts. So, from Paul from Chicago, if poor old Craddock had the fence, do you suppose your opinion on armored cruisers would still be the same? I think if Craddock had had... More shit. It wouldn't have really changed much the outcome. Because whilst, yes, the armoured cruisers were by that point woefully overtaken by events, the trouble was the battle cruisers being built at that point were much bigger than the battle cruisers started out with. When you're talking about battle cruisers the size of the Invincible class, then it is an honest solution of do you build a armoured cruiser or do you build a battle cruiser. However, once you're dealing with battle cru uh, armament, uh, battle cruisers the size of Hood, and even really with the sa uh, size of Renown and Repulse, you're dealing with ships which are getting far bigger, uh, uh, far more powerful and far larger than you can build in uh, suitable numbers. And you need to start to need a ship which is a deterrent capability against them. So, a, a 15,000 ton vessel is a deterrent capability against a battle cruiser in protecting your surface for aiding. So, it's about commerce protection. So, I don't think my view on armor cruiser would change if Craddock had had defense with him. I think there might also have been a scenario if Craddock had managed to have slightly more powerful force, he would have been probably a lot more successful. Siegfried. Shouldn't the other one be Roy then? Go back to Anson is quite happily here. Again, the thing about this UAD scenario is that it does, and this is the one area I do point out that there are issues, it does handle this ship like it is a traditional battleship. When in fact it could be taking a far more, a far narrower angle on its opponent. It could be presenting a far narrower profile and heading far more towards or in the general direction of their its opponents than it currently is. But we'll see. It's to be fair, I have to let the AI run this one, so that's what I'm doing. Marcus Franconian, like, what if the Deutsche class and Monoshir had the same armor layout distribution of fixed of the old Panzer uh, Panzer sheet? 
uh, Zealand Provincial in 1909. How that would have impacted their careers? Mm, it wouldn't really have changed things much. Honestly, the problem for those ships was that there was more their engines and their weaponry than anything else. They needed. They either needed. Uh, what, what they really needed was more smaller guns than the few big guns. You, you had the big guns as a status symbol. Yes, you've got these massive 11 inch guns. Lovely. What are they going to actually allow you to do? Can they allow you to fire rapidly enough for a cruise engagement? No. Do they have enough firepower that you can start punching up against battle cruisers and battleships? No. So what do they do give you? They give us 11 inch guns, which are the grand total of nothing. In a world where the Alaskas exist, yes, you can maybe argue for them, but in the nicest way, if the Alaskas had been in service earlier, then the Royal Navy would have probably had equivalents of the Alaskas in service, so would the Japanese, in which case Deutschland class would have looked like these Oh, you have 11-inch guns. How pretty. Can we squish you? The only one for whom 11-inch guns doesn't make sense is the Royal Navy if they're going with a 14-inch battleship. But the thing is, if everyone's building cruisers with 12-inch guns by that point, then in the nicest way, no one is building a 14-inch gun battleship. It would be an embarrassment. It would be a national joke. Aaron Cash, always find the counties an interesting uh, beast. Such a small amount of secondaries, and yet still packing torpedoes. Yeah. And uh, then a very nice message from Strider. Um, don't worry, Strider. I, 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 most people don't get British sarcasm, and most people definitely don't get my sarcasm. So I, I understand it, but he, you know, I, I, I don't mind about the replies. But I think that's in response to my discussions about the Alaska class. 20th July 1941. The orange background makes the white text eligible without the squinting. Bad choice. I am... Um, sorry, not sorry. The sort of the unofficial colour I tend to like to use for this channel is orange. But I do agree there is some problem with that particular... Uh, that particular slide, and I need to work on the, the selection of orange. I need to work on the formatting of that. I think I'm going to have some work and look into the font design. Digital 90, hello. I do appreciate the aesthetics and their very worthwhile service. Could they be better? Sure, but they were more than good enough for what the Royal Navy needed. You are true. Andrew Cox, if you say 9.2 inch was the proper gun for a heavy cruiser when the battleships had 12 inch guns, then the Alaskas were probably undergunned for a 16-inch battleship world. Mm. It probably works out, because honestly, 12, once you get... Trouble is, the bigger the gun you go, the, far, the slower your rate of fire. And a cruiser needs a certain amount of speed of fire and rate of fire, because it has to engage other cruisers as well. And this is the main problem with the Alaska. The Alaska's very good at engaging heavy cruisers. Oh, good lord, what, what have they... They've already done that to Singfrid. Singfrid is gone. This is not fair. This is a nasty fight. So Singfrid is trying to hang back there, and Bismarck is not even having fun. Oh, my. I didn't expect it to be quite like this. I, I, I had a feeling that with them not having enough of a speed advantage to be able to really get away, there'd be a problem. And the four extra guns per ship would give them a lot of firepower advantage. But Anson and Malaya are pretty much untouched, and Bismarck and Zingfried are in trouble. Thanks, I'm going. The Dutch government did consider a 9.4 inch gun for the series of armored cruisers in the 1930s as part of the 3A class cruisers and 3B class cruisers. By two cruisers per uh, two cruisers per battle cruiser. That would have been an interesting scenario because I think if the Dutch had done it, then I think quite a few others would have probably on, gone on that. Hello, Steve. Hmm. Alaska's a dissed by some because one of the main roles it was built for is gone by the time it was actually commissioned. Killing other cruisers. But obviously, escorting carriers was still an important role. The trouble is, you had other ships that could do that, and do that role to an argument better, i.e. the hours. Um, and that's the reality. Right? And it may be true, but it's not like it was totally useless. Mm, no, but there is a reason why the hours stuck around in service for a long time and the Alaskas were 
got rid of quite quickly. Relative speaking. Uh, I don't think I've ever said that the Vanguard should be lauded as a wonderful and superior ship and the Alaskas were a useless waste. The Alaskas weren't a useless waste. In the nicest way, when they were conceived, it was very sensible, and if war hadn't happened when it did, they would have been very, very much of value. Okay, that was quick and relatively painful. <sighs> quick and definitely relatively painful. Um, let's see. What can we do here? What can we do? I'm not surprised the battle was won. I, I really am not surprised. Uh, ooh, what shall we add in? Shall we add some destroyers in? No, I'm not letting the AI design my destroyer. We all can guess what my destroyer is going to look like. Uh, if anyone wants to try and suggest what they think it's going to look like, don't worry. You can probably know already. Although, they haven't got the right top for a, a Royal Navy destroyer. Um... Better than him. Better than And main guns will go for a pair of five inches because they're the closest to what? Building. Bada bidding. Yeah, and above. Bennett. Engine efficiency. Looks like I'm going to need another funnel. So, engine efficiency now at 100%. Characteristics, that'll do. Oh, I'd like it a bit faster. Eugent, and yes, 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 those all do. Crew, well, it's got to be veterans, because it's going to be a tribal class. Components, oh, it's going to be that. It's going to be oil-powered. It's Gear turbines. Does it have any actual armor? If it does, it's going to be corrupt. As a barbette, that's going to be it. Reinforced bulkheads, yes, give it survivability. Anti flood system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Increased load of shells. Increased load of torpedoes. Electrohydraulic and auto, definitely. Top of the range sonar, RDF radar, all the gadgets we can put into it. This ship is going to rock. It's going to probably sound quite like a. Um, A tribal class at a certain point. Ooh, that's about right. That's about right. And 
obviously it's going to be a slightly adapted tribal class. Just a slightly adapted one. Let's take that down to 30. Technically, they should have 36 knots to be fast enough relative to the battleships. He's a and we want forced. We have enough of that. that. That's a good that's a good ship, but it's a bit overweight, isn't it? Just a tad. A tad overweight. That'll do. That'll do. Zoom. That's the anti-submarine system. Take the bubbets. And the anti-flood down to two. Uh, range is fine. If I can take that down to... Let's try it down to 34. Free. Still a five knot advantage. Forty tons overweight. Ooh, what can I do to get forty tons? What can I do to get forty tons? That'll do. That's an extra 40 tons. So, that's the Royal Navy destroyers. And let's go deal with our counterpart destroyers. Ah, oh, German destroyers. What are we going to produce for you? Something decent. Let's go. Let, let, let's completely ignore everything which actually built for the German Navy and actually build something which is actually good at its job. Um, you have got to me. The main guns. Again, we'll go with five inch to give them something which can actually pack a pot up. Uh, pack a actually, no, the, the, this is well, the, yeah, they're going with the, the, the maximum they're giving me is five inch, so I'm going to give them five inch, but we all know the reality of the German Navy. Occasionally interesting. Uh, let's rebalance that. Okay, I need some torpedoes. Where am I gonna? Where do you put the? T okay. That's just. That's just. Why is there a thing sitting in the middle of my ship? Yes. Let's see if this is any better. Oh no! It still has that ugly thing. Oh good God! That's even worse. What is it with these hull designs? Okay, okay, let's see what we can do. Where can I stick my torpedoes to start us? That's the first thing I'm going to ask. Where can my torpedoes go? There and there. Okay. So, got them in. Right, I need to stick in a funnel somewhere. That's the smallest tunnel I, a funnel I can get. Can I fit that in? I can fit that in there, and I can fit that in there. Okay. The main guns. Five inch goes... 
There. There. Main tower goes... There. Secondary tower. Can we fit a secondary tower actually in somewhere on this ship? That's a tower of barbettes. Targeting tower. There we go. Go there. I don't want you to think that the German ships are necessarily all bad. No, they do have some good options, but... There is part of me, which is, seriously, wondering about those options. There we go. Let's hope that is sort of better. If they have any armor, it's going to be the latest crop. And reinforced bulkheads. And yeah, we're better seeing some sensors. Stereoscopic. Two sticks, that's more realistic for the Germans. RDF, yeah, and radar. Uh, Gen 1 seems more likely heard. Right. So, there we go. Oh, let's give them some barbette protection as well. They're going to have the strongest for their size barbette protection of any ship in this fight. And standard crew quarters. Oh, that's big some overweight. I wonder if I can take them up to 32 knots that way to do them. Yes, I can. Okay. I've given them veterans. Let's launch the battle and see what happens. I'll get back to the question. Start the battle. So, come then and make sure division four. The battle line. <laughs> I'm not sure how Division 4 has become the battle line, but the, the, your destroyers, please note your destroyers, this is a strangely even fight. They actually have more torpedoes than you do, but you have a slightly higher speed. Okay. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. Hello, Samaraz. And let's see what the other ones. We have Sybil, we have Nomad, and we have Nugent. Hmm. Cute. And here come the battleships. And there seems to be a little scaling issue going on here, but we'll leave that to one side. The battleships seem to be moving fairly quick. But that's quite good, because they are designed as 28 knot battleships, so yeah. Um uh... Oh yeah, they've got the smoke going. I love it when the destroyers produce the smoke, just to wind up your opponents. This is going to get an interest, it'll be an, it'll come an interesting fight. I have this already feel as feeling it's going to be an interesting fight. Anyway, um, Bo Tate, hello, thanks for commenting. Counties are beautiful ships with a great record. The issue I see with the orange background is the white lettering. Maybe try a different colouring for said lettering. I am considering trying blue. Centurion, really good a video. Mm, very thought-provoking analysis. Thank you. My preferred build? Basically, Adrian's Belfast Edinburgh. I think they're about the best balanced 10,000 ton cruiser you can build. Four, uh, time, uh, four treble six-inch guns, a good rate of fire, and six 
between the four inch guns gives plenty of heavy AA and, and or sneaky straw hurting capability. Space for many wep more weapons, pom poms, added during the war, torpedoes, space for crew, space for equipment. Only downside for them is length and so possibly tactical radius. A small version might be appropriate for fleet work, dropping a triple six inch turret, but possibly more video at torpedoes and a short length. Village class? Hmm. Honestly, I'd have probably gone with a port class or weak class a la Ara Fusers. Um. US cruisers are great, but I'm not sure how much I would want to take an earlier type of US cruiser into the med when the Italians were at the nastiest and also most threatening, but in Pacific, absolutely brilliant. RA went more for a cruiser, while the US went more for a component of the battle fleet. It's going to be an interesting discussion with the cruisers, I think, coming up. Um, Andrew Cox, listening to your closing comments, I can't help thinking that they apply equally to King George V. It says a lot about British interwar politics and planning, and there are lots of interesting things about King George V. Um, Mick Brown. I'm not sure what would be practical construct, but I think the RN would have been better thinking of their heavy cruisers in the same way as the Nelrods. Three turrets close together, meaning a smaller, admittedly uglier ship. I don't consider them. In the nicest way. In what world is that an ugly ship? Looking around from. Where, the, where is my battleship division? There you go. This is not an ugly ship. This is a beautiful looking ship. It's gorgeous. Look at that bow wave! Look at that bow wave! How can you call that ugly? And look at those beautiful guns. They are completely even in numbers. I would say the German destroyers are slightly heavier armed. The British destroyers are slightly faster. And... I'm fairly certain the British battleships are confident enough about their actual fighting capability that they may or may not be actually engaging the German destroyers with their 15-inch guns. <laughs> oh, good lord. That is what they're doing. <laughs> um, yes, if a German destroyer ceases to exist at some point, it might well be due to, due to a 15-inch round. Oh, good. That's just not nice. That's, that, that's, that's not nice. That's, that's pretty much evil. Okay, I think that one's gone. Um, my destroyers appear to be doing okay. German battleships. They're still alive, which is good for them. But the trouble for them is that if their destroyers all get wiped out too early in this fight, then they end up with a fight of four destroyers and two battleships versus them. Ouch. Anyway. Make them triple eight inch, uh, or seven inch, or seven and a half inch if tonnage got tight. Probably eight inch is fine. With a good armored belt, one triple torpedo launch at each side facing the half quarter, and really intended for firing anything chasing them if needed. Tempting. If they if they ran into a battleship or battle cruiser, but the primary intent is that they roll it into the view like a Liverpudlian brawler, eager to smash its face into an enemy cruiser bold enough to present themselves. I'm sure many officers will be upset at more shoes, but if it's compact enough for yards to construct and to have a relatively short main arm belt, wait, then it could probably be built in reasonable numbers to be survival against prettier but less durable ships. Yep. Graham 1973. The Royal Australian Navy worked up a design for a heavy cruiser with a 3 times triple eight inch turret, A, B, and X, layout in the 1920s. The plan was to build two of them in Australia, then the UK came along and offered two counties instead. The plan was abandoned. A web search for Cockatoo Cruiser, name comes from the intention to build them at Cockatoo Island Naval Shipyard, brings up some very everything known about them and the artists and some artist impressions. They are pretty interesting ships, the Cockatoo Cruisers, and worthwhile thinking about. Honestly, myself, I think the most likely actual use would be a, a if they did it, would have been a triple t a gun layout based on the renowned design rather than the Nelson Elrod design. I three turrets A, B, and X, but, and sort of, as you get, get, get with York and Exeter, but we can all dream of what an improvement might have been. Ren Paulus, are there any other examples of heavy armour mysteriously appearing? You would think every treaty power would have done something like that as a hedge against the war breaking out, or at least the cruisers. Well, the Italians, Germans, and Japanese just carried out creative accounting. The USN spam cruisers at everyone in the 19, late, basically in the late 1930s, early 1940s, before World War II begins. The Americans just start building all these cruisers, and then by the time war, uh, they are actually coming into service, they are 
have paid no more than lip service, if anything, to original ideas of being below 10,000 tons. So everyone has their own way of getting around it. Um, Ground 1973. For anyone who's interested, there's a listing of all the county class names from fiction I've come across. Here are the Australian names, HMAS names. Most of these originate from fiction from J.E. McDonnell. Exceptions are HMAS Devonport, which comes from a Douglas Riemann novel, and HMAS Sydney, whose origin is unknown to me. Some mentioned a novel which had a ship in that in it, but could not remember the title author at this time. And the last one is IMHO Awesome. awesome. Admont, Albany, Darwin, Devonport, Havoc, Sydney, and Vixen. There are a rather lot of British HMS counties, as might be expected, and in, case, in a few cases, subclasses are identified or can be inferred. We have Kent subclass, Durham, Flintshire, Norfolk subclass, Hampshire, Wiltshire, Surrey subclass, Monmouth, unspecified subclass, including unfinished ships fictionally completed, Barsetshire, Berwickshire, Leicestershire, Lincolnshire, Northampton, Northumberland, Stafford, Staffordshire, Tartar, and Worcestershire. My only point is, Tartar sounds far better as a destroyer. Um, wooden Captain. Hello, Wooden Captain. Heavy cruise ships, uh, Canaris and Belarus, both built in Spain just before the Civil War. They're fantastic examples designed by Watson derived from the candy class. Canaris was the last of its class, still commissioned until 1975. True. And they are kind of interesting ships. But, as I said in their, cl in their description, I'm not quite sure about their capabilities. It does seem to me be that the Germans have lost Destroyer. That's in an even balance. You'd have, they'd have probably hoped not to lose one quite so quickly. Especially not to the battleships firing. Oh well, we'll leave it going. I'm a bit worried about the battleships wasting ammunition hitting Destroyers rather than on those things. The battleships don't appear to be in any trouble from those things. Oh, Nugent, you in trouble? Ooh, I think the Bismarck, uh, Bismarck and uh, Pal are attacking Nugent. Good lord, she does look... That isn't a destroyer superstructure for this period. I'm sorry, it really isn't. It's not even a sloop superstructure, really, for this period. It's a World War One era superstructure. We'll leave that to one side. Justin, the Hawkins class. That time when the Royal Navy managed to get the world's navies to phone themselves by not thinking treaty clauses free properly. Yep. Justin. Also, got no spring shot to show off with. If I'm a British in the mid 1920s, I'd want three triple six inch turrets forward, with three super firing twin four inch mounts aft, displacement target of 7,500 tons, and a mysterious lack of armour, but a very large collection of new carts with flat metal plates about four and a half inch thick in the back of a warehouse. Mm hmm. Sounds good. Calm guns, folks. Orange is good. But a more contrasting text color would be better. Uh, would uh, is uh, perhaps necessary. How many of the German destroyers are sinking? Oh, there you go. So the German destroyers are slowly being massacred, which is not good, and the German battleships are doing nothing about it. I do find this AI interesting sometimes. Tom Gasberg, rid of a plate with... Hmm. Admiral Graf Spey versus a full fat county and a town, maybe. But the Exeter got lucky. Uh, if she had two 11-inch uh, hips simply over-penetrating up the nation, a third one passing through her superstructure, and only detonating a 4-inch mount on the other side. Also, against two opponents with two 11-inch turrets? Who knows? Hmm. But, as said, full-fat county with some full-fat towns? That would have not been good. And so far, this does not appear to be going well for the Germans at all. They've lost... I think they have one destroyer left fighting. And I 
I'm not sure how long the GV DDV4 is going to be on. And at which point, I'm fairly certain Royal Navy destroyers get to go play torpedo attack craft versus their German battleships. They're out of some ammunition for the 15 inch guns. What are they out of? They appear to be out of, I presume that's high explosive. So they still got armor piercing. No, it's high explosive ammo they have left. So they've used all their ammo attacking the destroyers. That's not necessarily the best idea I've ever heard, but okay. But there again, these are also almost out of their armor piercing ammo, so I'm not too worried about that one. And yeah, they're now concentrating in. So, Jack Crow, I would build cruisers that have nine, three, triple, eight inch guns, and some that have 12, four, triple, six inch guns. Both types would have 12, um, 12, that's six twin, four inch guns, and six torpedo tubes, two triple, and at least 20, that's 10 twin, two inch guns. 4 inch main belt armor, 2 inches around other areas, 8 inch turret faces, and 2 inch tops. 8,000 nautical mile range. Using UAD, I get it in at less than 10,400 tons you mentioned. That's a good design. That does sound good. Um, yeah. I, the, one of the things I've really enjoyed about the whole county class experience and the whole uh, point of doing that series has been the sheer number of different ideas I've had come through from people about what ships could have been designed. And it's kind of like the Cockatoo Cruisers. There were a lot of options out there, and it does make you sort of pair in and go, why do you end up, why did you end up with the options you did? What was the selling point for the counties in the configuration they were? And honestly, the main advantage I have for them is tradition. That is literally what I see where it comes from. So the Germans have lost pretty much everything. Where is the last remaining DD? Oh, it's still up that. Well, it might be able to do something. It's one percent afloat. Yeah, I I don't think that's going to do much. Uh, let's go have a look at my destroyers. Yeah, the Germans are so lucky this is being run by the AI, not me, because if it was being run by me, you four would be going in close with your torpedoes and smoke. I mean, everything would be going on. <laughs> yeah, the Cockatoo Cruisers and other ideas which have come through show the sheer amount of ideas that were available at the time, but also the sheer amount of ideas people can come up with for these solutions. And yes, I do admit we have an advantage these days because we have the systems we do have, the for other things we're fortunate to do have, UADs, um, the Ultimate Animal Dreadnoughts, which I'm playing now, um, Spring Sharp, all those systems. They really do help. But the thing is, we're talking about the Admiralty, we're talking about the Directors of Naval Construction, we're talking about the fully worked up teams in all those different yards in the, the UK was lucky enough to have. Armstrong, Whitworth, and all the rest. And yet they come with the county class. And to me, that shows the county class are, in many ways, a compromise. They're always going to be a compromise because that's what they've come up with, decided to go with. They've decided to go with something which is eight inch gu uh, which is eight inch guns, because that's the limit. Decided it's got to be 10,000 tons, because that's what they did to get the Hawkins class through. And they're just sort of realizing, hang on, we can't build enough battle. And this is another trouble you have, and this is another thing which is why I believe the Alaskas, etc., are inevitable. 
in terms of the rise of a supercruiser, because once you cannot build capital ships in terms of as many as you want, that whole battle cruiser battleship thing goes away, and you end up with the fast battleship. Because, ultimately, you can't afford to have a ship which can't sit in the fighting line if you end up in a big battle, but you also need a ship which is fast enough to do all the task group operations and ocean operations you need from it. Makes the fast battleship in inevitable. But, it means that there's an opening for that large cruiser, that large purpose-built commerce, uh, commerce defense and commerce radar ship in the major navies. And that's where you're going to get these large cruisers coming in. Call them armored cruisers, call them super heavy cruisers, call them whatever you want. That's where they come in from. And it's also one of the reasons why the 10,000 ton limit becomes such a problem, because if you call them light cruisers and basically said, we're going to have a moratorium for 10 years on the building of heavy cruisers, and then in 1930 we're going to reconsider this, that would have been adaptable because everyone knew what they were building. They realized it was a 10,000 ton light cruiser, and honestly, you'd have got a load of sixes. Everyone would have kept quiet about wanting an eight uh, larger gunship until 1930, which point they just started hassling. He probably said, you can keep, if those of you who have armoured cruisers, etc., which you wish to keep in service, can keep them in service to preserve your tonnage. And that is, I have to admit, is sort of the route I'm going to go down, because as part of my equitable plan, I'm going to have them look, cause I, I think one of the things they have to realise and they did understand at the time, where they were building things according to light cruiser specs, and they weren't there for them able to build a true heavy cruiser. And the moment you go into a treaty where you're going to have heavy cruiser, you have to have a rational discussion of what is a heavy cruiser. And if you're going to keep things at the 8-inch limit, that's fine. you still got the time. Gonna be out of ammunition soon. Which is problematic. Uh oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, to be fair. Whilst most British battleships were filled through with torpedoes. In the late 1930s, mainly 30 percent the Germans don't seem to have done. So, yeah, that's normal. They won't have been held by torpedoes. Woohoo! Thank you, Germany. Okay, and she's got a lot of ammunition left. Dominion. She's completely out of ammunition. Well, how do all four of you feel about being, if I take this off AI and see what I would do in real life in this scenario, how for, how how do you all feel about being basically shell sponges while the destroyers and torpedoes get in close? Because yes, they have six inch guns, which is going to be interesting and probably will be the advantage in the fight. But we have a lot of torpedoes. Oh. Ready for smoke screen. <laughs> they still got plenty of fire. Blowing smoke screen.
Yeah, I'm taking the AR off. Let's see what we can do. You're milling around. I want you to go... Full speed. Boost line ahead. At full speed, and I want you to try and stick some torpedoes down that ship. They start engaging, I will do smoke. And then let's see what happens, shall we? Let's see how aggressive I'm prepared to be with my electron lives. Mm, probably incredibly aggressive with the electron lives. Starting to fire at me. Wait till they get a bit closer. Okay, they're capable of 30 knots. Now this should give the Germans a bit of a problem, because instead of trying to go ahead, race to be ahead of them, I've now changed the bearing, so I'm going to head up behind them. Which should make it slightly more difficult for them to engage. Short term it won't, but long term it will.
need to get into torpedo range. That's always the problem. The destroyer's only advantage is to get into torpedo range. Only advantage, and the only thing they can do. Get into torpedo range. I don't think anyone's going to get into torpedo range though today. I don't know. That's the other two of the battle line. Oh, they're coming up quite quickly. Um, that could be something which is a bit of a problem for the Germans. Well, they've been playing around the battleship uh, and the destroyer as the, the the battleships are coming up quite quickly. And yeah, I've lost the destroyer. Not good. Where's your destroyer? Where's your torpedo range? Half the advantage is that whilst they're concentrating on the destroyers, they are sort of missing out on this quite scary fact of torpedoes getting closer and closer to them from battleships. In range. Oof. I'm not sure what speed she's currently managing, but I'm presuming it's not the full speed she's ever uh, she's able of in theory, which might well explain why they're managing to catch up with them. We've lost speed, but not that much speed in terms of the battleship line. In fact, so much so they're actually catching Sashen because she's trying to stay back to protect her at the Bismarck. And Anson looks quite happily coming along here. The Minion quite happily coming along here. Both of them mounting 16 torpedoes, a load of 4-inch guns, uh, etc. The destroyers we have lost one of out of four. The Germans have lost all four. And yeah, at this point, honestly, the German ship should be fleeing. At a certain point, probably when they get inside 4-inch gunfire range, that battleship is probably going to find itself facing torpedoes, because if we go back to the battle line again and we consider them, torpedoes launchers very specifically are positioned really very close. 
the edges to give them the maximum all around fire. Coverage. Also, the Germans are very much concentrating on. <laughs> they're basically going, we're concentrating on your destroyers. We're concentrating on destroyers. We're ignoring the battleships coming up which aren't firing guns at us. Which is a little bit silly. Because if I'd been concentrating on anything, it would be the wondering why the battleships were steaming up quite so fast and trying to get quite so close to me. Not what are the destroyers doing on their own, wandering around with various smoke going off. Yeah, you're going to be in 4-inch fire range shortly, which is going to be interesting. And I would guess that's in 4-inch fire range. Bismarck's turning to side to deal with the very nasty British ships, which are now in four inch gun range. British battleships don't have smoke for some reason, but that's fine. They're pretty heavily armored. And the four inch guns are raining down on mostly on you. I'm going to try and get out of four inch gun range. This is not fair. Well, you should try and get out of four inch gun range because that is not going to be fair. And if you get into two inch gun range, it's going to get even nastier because at a certain point, you're going to be in confirmed torpedo kill range. And I think you might already be in that range considering there are torpedoes on their way towards you. Odds are you're going to beat those torpedoes. But there's four in the water. There's possibly as many as eight in the water. Take out one of these battleships, and suddenly all that defensive fire they have goes down a long way. And they know that. So they are currently, the Germans are currently playing a very, very protective game. Trying their best to avoid, well, that's out of everything but high explosive. And that's out of everything but high explosive and six inch guns. Six inch guns are do, are working away. The one thing the Germans are very happy that the British didn't have bring along a third battleship and another four destroyers, which would of course be a more realistic thing. It would be more realistic for the British to have had a flotilla, and it would be more realistic for the British to have if the Germans had produced two, uh, had a task force going up which had two. The odds are the British would have sent out a task force which had at least three. Or at least two in an aircraft carrier. So, yeah. I need them to avoid torpedoes. There are no torpedoes. Uh, 
that section. And I think almost that that is going around for another time, another attempt to kill something. But that's. I wonder what the range of the torpedoes is. It's not showing up as it normally does. The gun range is showing up, but the torpedo range on this ship is really not showing up. But, alas, I think it is now time to leave this, because I think I have been taking this time, your time with this uh, match for far too long. And it can go on for a really long time, and you can really enjoy these things. I will say, in my experience, this doesn't end well for the Germans. Although, in my experience, I usually lose about two to three more destroyers. It has been run a couple of times before. So, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you found it interesting. I know I did. I found the question, especially. I always do enjoy the question. Thank you for all your support. Thank you for all the super chats, super thanks. Thank you, Patreon members. Thank you for everyone who does all they do towards the channel. Thank you. And, well, I hope you're enjoying what's coming out. I hope you enjoyed discussions that are coming out. As said, I have sort of revealed that the London Treaty series is going to start off with London Treaty as it was, as in the Washington Treaty as it was, and then how do you build an equitable London Treaty based on and I think the first area which I'm really going to be diving into is the heavy cruisers. I'm probably going to record that video first. I'll probably end up recording the capital ship, uh, for the capital ships to come out first, but I'll record the heavy cruisers first. So, thank you very much, everyone. Thank you for all your help. Thank you for all your support. I hope you enjoyed the videos. I hope the video, this video has been good. And I always slightly worry when I put it on the 60 frames per second because it's just a poor little laptop. And it's currently doing everything. And when I get back from Canada, that is going to be the first thing that has the major work. It is. It's going to be the first thing that has the major work. New computer. Thank you very much. Take care. And. Okay.